In this session, we are going to take a look at the self-assessment regime, and in particular, we will concentrate on the filing deadlines for self-assessment returns, penalties for late returns, and penalties for incorrect returns. But before we do that, let us take a few minutes to have a look at the structure and organisation of the revenue. We know that the UK tax system is administered generally by central government, but the ministry concerned with the collection and imposition of taxes is the Department of the Treasury. The Treasury is also known as the Exchequer, and at the head of this department you will find the Chancellor of the Exchequer. The administration of taxes in the UK is in the hands of the Commissioners for Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs. As the name suggests, the Commissioners are technically appointed by the Crown. The Commissioners, in turn, appoint civil servants to do the actual work of administration. These civil servants are called Officers of Revenue and Customs, often shortened to Revenue Officers. In this session, and the ones that follow it, we are concerned with the administration of income tax and capital gains tax. Rather than use the long-winded name of HM Revenue and Customs, we will refer simply to HMRC. HMRC manage the UK tax system on a day-to-day -day basis through a local compliance structure organised on a functional basis. This is divided into three taxpayer or customer groups, being large and complex businesses, small and medium-sized enterprises, and individual and public bodies. Customers in the first two groups have all tax matters dealt with by the same business unit. The local compliance teams also carry out enquiries. The Specialist Investigations Office deals with complex and serious cases which are not suitable to be dealt with by local compliance due to the size, nature, complexity or seriousness. A two-tier tribunal system comprising the first tier tribunal and the upper tribunal deals with points of dispute between taxpayers and HMRC. Self-assessment is the regime by which HMRC assess and collect direct tax in the UK. In the UK at present, we have around 30 million people who pay tax. Out of those 30 million people, around 10 million of us prepare income tax returns under the self-assessment system. Taxpayers who are self-employed must submit tax returns, as may individuals whose taxable income is above the basic rate threshold and who therefore pay tax at the higher rate. Taxpayers who have untaxed income also have to file tax returns. The most common example of untaxed income, i.e. income from which tax is not deducted at source, is property income. If you rent out a property, you have an obligation to report the property income from that rental to the revenue by means of a tax return. Finally, any taxpayer who has made a chargeable capital gain in the year also has a duty to submit a self-assessment return. We can see, therefore, that there are around 20 million people in the UK who pay income tax but do not have to fill in an income tax return. These will primarily be employees whose tax is deducted at source under the pay-as-you-earn system. Similarly, basic rate taxpayers who do not owe any more tax on their interest or their dividend income do not generally need to fill in a tax return. Before we get into the nitty-gritty of self-assessment, let us take a look at the requirement to notify chargeability to income tax or CGT. The basic idea here is that if you become chargeable to income tax or capital gains tax for the first time, you need to write to HMRC and inform them that you exist. Keeping a low profile and earning income without paying any tax is a serious offence under tax law and one that can carry a stiff penalty. If an individual becomes chargeable to income tax or capital gains tax, he has a duty to notify HMRC within six months of the end of the tax year in which he became chargeable. Assume an individual starts to receive property income in the tax year 2014-15. He becomes chargeable to income tax for the first time in 2014-15 
So the taxpayer has six months from the end of the tax year 2014-15 to give notice of chargeability. The deadline for notifying HMRC is the 5th of October 2015. In our example, we have taken the example of somebody who first receives property income in 2014-15. But the notification rules apply in the same way if a taxpayer has a capital gain or any untaxed interest or starts to trade in 2014-15. If the taxpayer misses this deadline, HMRC will charge a penalty. The penalty will be based on the behaviour of the person concerned and is a percentage of the potential lost revenue. The potential lost revenue is the amount of income tax, including Class 4 national insurance contributions, if relevant, and all capital gains tax unpaid at the 31st of January following the tax year as a result of the failure to notify. For a deliberate and concealed failure, the penalty will be a maximum of 100% of the potential lost revenue. For a deliberate but not concealed failure, the maximum penalty will be 70% of the potential lost revenue. And for any other case, for example, due to lack of care, the maximum penalty will be 30% of the potential lost revenue. A failure is deliberate and concealed where the failure is deliberate and the taxpayer makes arrangements to conceal the situation giving rise to the obligation. This would include creating false evidence of a non-taxable source of income to explain undisclosed income, creating false invoices to support inaccurate turnover figures or destroying books and records. A failure is deliberate but not concealed where the failure is deliberate but no arrangements are made to conceal the situation giving rise to the obligation. An example of this would be where a person is aware of the obligation to notify a source of income but decides not to do so without taking steps to conceal the income. Reductions in the amount of the penalty are available for both unprompted and prompted disclosures. The table now appearing on your screen details the maximum and minimum penalties that could apply. For example, if a taxpayer has failed to notify and his behaviour is deliberate and concealed, he will be charged a penalty of between 30 and 100% of the potential lost revenue if he makes an unprompted disclosure of the failure to HMRC. Note that where the taxpayer is simply careless in not making the necessary notification, the reduction in the penalty also depends on how long has elapsed since any tax, or NIC, first became unpaid as a result of the failure. Disclosure is unprompted if the taxpayer has no reason to believe HMRC have discovered or are about to discover the failure. Disclosure takes place where a taxpayer tells HMRC about the failure, gives HMRC reasonable help in calculating the resulting unpaid tax, and allows HMRC access to records to check the amount of unpaid tax. The actual reduction in the penalty depends on the quality of the elements of disclosure, including timing, nature and extent. Increased percentages apply where the late notification relates to an offshore matter, such as income arising or assets held overseas. The actual rates depend on whether the overseas country is a Category 1 territory, for example Canada, in which case the rates we have just looked at apply, or a Category 2 or 3 territory, in which case increased rates apply. These rates are given in the legislation. Greenland is an example of a Category 2 territory and Brazil is a Category 3 territory. A self-employed individual must also notify HMRC that they are liable for Class 2 National Insurance Contributions, or NICs. Notification must be made as soon as possible. In practice, a self-employed individual will notify HMRC for both tax and Class 2 NICs by registering his business with them. 
If notification for Class 2 NIC does not take place by the 31st of January following the end of the tax year in which the liability first arose, a penalty will be charged. This is identical to the late notification penalty for income tax purposes, with the relevant percentage applied to lost contributions. Lost contributions are the contributions due between the date the individual first became liable to pay a Class 2 contribution and the 31st of January before HMRC received notification of liability. We can illustrate the failure to notify penalty provisions by considering the position of Oscar. Oscar started to trade on the 1st of July 2014. He was very successful and did not have time to consider his self-assessment responsibilities. As a result, he did not notify HMRC of his self-employment by the 5th of October 2015. HMRC contacted Oscar in July 2016. And as a result, Oscar appointed a tax advisor. HMRC was subsequently notified of the self-employment. The tax return for 2014-15 was filed in August 2016, showing tax and Class 4 NIC due of £15,000. It would appear that the failure to notify HMRC of the self-employment by the 5th of October 2015 was due to carelessness, as Oscar did not deliberately decide not to notify HMRC. The maximum penalty is therefore 30% of the potential lost revenue of £15,000, which is the liability which should have been paid by the 31st of January 2016. However, Oscar made a prompted disclosure within 12 months of the tax becoming unpaid, so the penalty may be reduced to a minimum of 10% of the potential lost revenue. In addition, Oscar will also be charged an additional penalty as he failed to notify his liability for Class 2 NIC. A penalty of between 10 and 30% of the Class 2 NIC due between the 1st of July 2014 and the 31st of January 2016 will be charged. A few final points in relation to late notification penalties they must be paid within 30 days of the date the notice assessing the penalty is issued or interest will be charged. The decision to issue a penalty or the amount of the penalty can be appealed against. Finally, a penalty will not be charged if the taxpayer has a reasonable excuse for the failure and the failure is not deliberate. One final important thing to note here is that the notification of chargeability provisions only apply to taxpayers who have not already received a tax return from the revenue. If a taxpayer receives a tax return, it is a safe assumption that the inland revenue already know that that person exists. Therefore, any income received or gains made in the tax year can simply be disclosed on the tax return in the normal way. We have mentioned tax returns. So now let us have a look at what they are and what goes on them. Tax returns are typically issued by HMRC to taxpayers on the 6th of April immediately following the tax year. So tax returns for the year ended the 5th of April 2015, i.e. returns for the 2014-15 tax year, will usually be issued the day after the end of the year i.e. on the 6th of April 2015. Every tax return requires the taxpayer to provide certain details. Any taxpayer must give details of all income received from all sources in the tax year. Certain allowances to be claimed by the taxpayer also need to be claimed within the tax return. For example, a taxpayer born before the 6th of April 1935, entitled to the married couples allowance, needs to claim that allowance on the return. Any other claims for relief also have to be made on the tax return. So, for example, any deductible payments, any tax reducers, any contributions to pension schemes and so on, which qualify for tax relief, must be claimed within the tax return. As well as sending the taxpayer a basic tax return, HMRC will add on separate supplementary pages to the end of the basic form. 
depending on the particular source of income. So, for example, employees will receive employment pages to fill in. Those with rental properties receive property income pages, and so on. So, those taxpayers with many sources of income will complete the basic return and add on all the supplementary pages. Once the taxpayer has completed the tax return, he will sign a declaration to say that, to the best of his knowledge and belief, the tax return is correct and complete. If the tax return turns out not to be correct and complete, i.e., there are errors or omissions, then HMRC do have powers to charge penalties for incorrect returns. Whereas all income tax returns require details of taxpayer's income and allowances, only some returns require the taxpayer to make what we call a self-assessment. There are two separate dates for filing the return. Depending on whether the taxpayer is filing a paper return or an online electronic return, where the taxpayer completes a paper return, the return should normally be filed no later than the 31st of October, following the end of the tax year. Therefore, for the tax year 2014-15, the paper return must normally be filed by the 31st of October 2015. However, The paper return can be filed within three months of the date of issue of the return, if this is later than the 31st of October. Where a taxpayer completes an online return, the return should normally be filed no later than the 31st of January, following the tax year end. Therefore, for 2014-15, the online return must normally be filed by the 31st of January 2016. However. The online return can be filed within three months of the date of issue of the return, if this is later than the 31st of January. We will now consider the filing deadlines where a tax return is issued late. This might happen when a taxpayer has started in business and tells HMRC that he is chargeable to tax at, say, just before the 5th of October deadline. Here we will assume that the 2014-15 tax return is issued by HMRC to a taxpayer on the 25th of November 2015. The deadline for filing the return is the later of the 31st of January, or three months from the issue of the return. So, in this instance, the later of these two dates is three months from the issue of the return. This means that the final date for filing the return is the 25th of November 2015, plus three months, which takes us to the 25th of February 2016. If the return is filed by this date, HMRC cannot charge any late return penalties. There is one final deadline to be aware of in respect of tax return filing, where a taxpayer has tax deducted at source via PAYE. Underpayments of tax of less than three thousand pounds can be collected via PAYE rather than a one-off payment. In order for this treatment to apply, if the taxpayer is filing an online return, it must be filed by the earlier deadline, the 30th of December, following the end of the tax year. If a taxpayer files a return online, he does not have to worry about calculating his own tax liability. HMRC software will automatically calculate the tax liability. If the taxpayer is filing a paper return, he can self-assess his tax liability using the tax calculation summary. However, where a return is submitted by the 31st of October or two months from the issue of the return, if later, HMRC will calculate the tax for the taxpayer if he wishes. The taxpayer will tell the revenue what his income and allowances are. And the revenue will calculate the tax on his behalf. For example, assume a tax return for the year ended the 5th of April 2015 is issued at the normal time, i.e., just after the end of the tax year on the 6th of April 2015. If the taxpayer wishes to file a paper return, but wants HMRC to work out his tax liability for him, i.e., he does not want to self-assess. This tax return must be submitted no later than the 31st of October 2015, i.e., the 31st of October following the end of the tax year. Consider the position if the return is issued late. 
Assume HMRC send the taxpayer his 2014-15 tax return on the 3rd of September 2015. If the taxpayer does not want to self-assess, then he must submit the return by the later of the 31st of October 2015 or two months following the issue of the return. Two months after the issue of the return here is the 3rd of November 2015. As long as this return is with HMRC by the 3rd of November 2015, HMRC will calculate the tax liability for the taxpayer. If the taxpayer wishes to file a paper return and is happy to self-assess, the deadline is the later of the 31st of October 2015 or three months from the date of issue, being the 3rd of December 2015. You can see that where a return is issued late, the deadline for filing a paper return depends on whether the taxpayer wishes to self-assess or not. If the taxpayer misses the 3rd of December 2015 deadline in the above example, then all is not lost because taxpayers have until the 31st of January to file their returns in order to avoid a penalty. The taxpayer would need to file an online return, in which case his tax liability will be calculated automatically. If the taxpayer misses the 31st of January 2016 deadline, HMRC will charge him penalties for the late filing of the tax return.